I'm using the tripod today because my hands are super shaky. <sighs> I can try to drink my coffee here. Ugh. <laughs> so if I try holding the camera, it's going to be all over the place. The reason for that is because. I still can't get the lawnmower out, it's buried, and I had to do something with the yard today, because i surprised nobody's complained yet, but it, it's getting pretty bad, and I had to get the weed eater out, and it took as long as, well, I went as long as the battery lasted, I got most of the backyard done just with that, so I'm impressed, the battery actually lasts fairly long in that thing. So, I'm wearing sandals today. It's pretty hot today. And I'm going to be pretty itchy by the time I go in. So, I'm not sure what I'm really going to be doing next little while. Um, I'm just, my body just isn't going to work for me as far as getting the stuff done out here. So I'll probably end up driving the monster until it breaks and I can't drive it anymore and then I won't have a choice. But I can't do anything out here. And that's one of the reasons why I can't get the lawnmower out because it's buried and in order to get that out there's other stuff I need to do first. And and it's just not happening. But uh, things are getting to me. Um, time is going by so fast now. I just I don't even have time to make a video anymore. Um, I reduced things that I do. And that works for a little while. I'm not doing any more than I was before. I'm actually doing less. I'm not sleeping any longer, but there's less hours in the day. And it, it's kind of... It's... I don't have the time to do the things I need to do. Um... Other things that I haven't talked about, uh, the state of the world, it's just, everything is just kind of hitting me at once, 
and well not at once but you know cumulatively and I don't know if you've noticed <clears throat> the last few videos that I've done that hurts I can't think straight anymore I get confused um, now I do my talk before I go out I forget what I was going to talk about or I just I draw a blank halfway through that's normal for me that's you know, what everybody likes to call fibro fog but it's just it seems to be getting worse and it's taking its toll on me mentally it's 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 tough to deal with it I'm having a hard time just dealing with everything and that just that kind of it in itself kills the motivation but even if I got the motivation there's no time to do anything so I don't know what I'm gonna be doing I'm gonna take a break from my videos for a little bit uh, obviously I'm not gonna stop getting video because it's the cameras have to be there but I just don't have time to make videos right and like I was making one every day I was having no issues and then other things kind of came into play so I had to cut some <clears throat> other things out to make time for it and it, that was working and then all of a sudden there's like nothing there's no time so but <clears throat> I don't want to stop making videos I can't I just it's in me to do it I, I just I can't stop making them I just having a hard time finding the time to uh, when I go out here I, I feel like I've been out for about 10-15 minutes and I look at the times I've been out for 10 hours or 2 hours and it's just it's crazy I don't even get to enjoy going out anymore because it goes by so fast but today was our, our hottest day so far couldn't miss it couldn't <laughs> I had to go out and enjoy it um, I got, today's the 20th, I've got two or three more days before I get paid from YouTube. I've got money, I can't use it because, you know, 20 days ago, I ordered my new H9R. They still haven't shipped it, so I have to make sure that money is there for when they decide they're going to. And they're, they're using uh, the lockdown stuff as their excuse. Partially, maybe it's true. But if you've ever seen videos of the Amazon distrib distribution centers, it's all robots. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure robots are not affected by the lockdown. But... You know, they're, they're supposed to be hiring thousands of people. What are they doing? You know, it's the ro like, I know they need packers and stuff like that. But it's the robots that are actually going through the warehouse and picking out the items that are being purchased. Right? So they don't have actual people doing that. And I don't know if all distribution centers are the same or if it's just the big ones that are robotic. But you know, if you want to search for one of those videos on YouTube it's actually it's, it's pretty cool it's very sophisticated <laughs> but what actual positions they're hiring I don't know unless some of the smaller distribution centers are are still human driven I don't know but like I say 20 days come on I ordered my chocolate powder at the same time I already got it and even it took a couple weeks so I don't know. It's just kind of like I say, everything's getting to me. Brace yourselves, people. We're on the brink of what entomologists are calling a cicada tsunami. 17 years in the making. This is just a spectacular event. I mean, there's nothing else like this on the entire planet Earth, even in the entire universe. This is the only place anywhere 
that we have 13 and 17 year cicadas emerging by the billions, if not trillions. Warmer temperatures this week mean a noisy return of the bug eyed creepy crawlies across much of the eastern United States and parts of the Midwest. Why so many cicadas? Cicadas have one of the most bizarre strategies for survival of any creature on planet Earth. They'll fill the belly of every predator that wants to eat them and there'll still be enough left over to perpetuate their species. Boom. The group of bugs making an appearance this year is known as Brood 10, only coming up from underground every 17 years. Social media a buzz with news of the insects return. Are y'all going to continue to be outside with the insects that have risen from the ground? and are leaving their exoskeletons behind on everything. Others waiting the nearly two decades to make them into a meal. Cicada tacos, cicada cookies. Cicada spending most of their lives underground eating tree roots before tunneling to the surface to look for mates. That noisy high pitched mating song reaching up to 100 decibels about the same as a motorcycle or a jackhammer. They're not going to harm you or your pet, so you don't have to fear the cicada. Seriously, don't let them bug you. Now I know some people will be afraid of cicadas, but hey, cicadas don't bite. Cicadas don't sting. <laughs> Mona is unwell right now. If something about them. So apparently the cicadas are emerging. I haven't heard any here. And it's kind of even with the noise from the monster and the wind blowing by me, I, I would still hear them. They're pretty loud. I haven't heard any yet. This is the perfect weather for them to come out. I'm not hearing anything here. So maybe it's just south of the border where they're going to be swarmed by them. <laughs> I guess I, I haven't seen anything here or heard anything. A small Kanata park where people walk is being guarded by a very territorial bird. It tries to attack any passerby who dares cross its path. And as CTV's Dave Charbonneau found out firsthand, this bird means business. You just have to be on your guard every time you take a walk along this path. This is Pete. Pete doesn't like people. Every spring, there's a red-winged blackbird that swoops down, that uh, <laughs> swoops down at everyone who walks by. For years, Pete has been attacking anyone who gets in his way. <laughs> Yesterday, we were walking along the path. We saw the bird. He didn't attack at that time, so I thought, let's, let's try this out. So I turned around and walked back, and he swooped down. And I had to fight him off. It was, it was, it was brutal. <laughs> this bird does this every year. We think that if you stare at him, uh, there's safety in numbers and more eyes on him means you can escape unscathed. It's very territorial. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 incredible. Residents in the area have even put up signs. It's not like you hear fluttering of wings. It's more like a, it's more like a snake coming right at your head. Warning, there's danger from above. You duck, you start running, and then you usually hear this hissing. But is it really as scary as people say it is? It couldn't be, could it? Oh, Bird psycho. Recently, I was biking by on a bike, going pretty fast, and I'm just looking down and I see my shadow, and I see the bird's shadow just coming right in on me. Experts say the attacks are most likely due to a nest nearby that Pete is protecting, and he's doing a good job of it. And they're all along this creek. Just this one has a vendetta for anyone who comes near its home, it seems like. And my son puts his helmet on and rides yeah. his bike by and gets pecked on the head. He loves it. So if you find yourself walking down this path in Canada, just know that you might be running for your life from Pete, the red-winged blackbird who owns this trail. It's good to know that I'm not the only one that he's, he's speaking on. <laughs> Dave Charbonneau, CTV News. Oh, it's nice to know I'm not the only one getting dive bombed by the red-winged blackbirds. Oh, we just got one here that uh, along the highway seems pretty protective of his area, but I haven't really had any issues with it this year. <laughs> so I guess I'm going to have to come up with a name for, for our bird here. And of course my brain won't work, I can't think of anything right now. So I'm not sure what else to talk about really. Uh, dam's closed up now, so I'm not going to be able to go out on the riverbed anymore. And it's it's hard for me to take a break down there now because there's there's always kids swimming down there, jumping off the dam. 
and I don't like sitting there when there's kids there because I don't want people to think I'm watching them. And it is pretty bad that I have to, you know, consider stuff like that. Like, I was going down the perk trail today, and there was, there was a girl that was walking, and she decided to start running, and I'm, like, getting closer to her. I just, stop running, I don't want people to think I'm chasing you, you know, it's just, that's the world we live in. You think of things like that, you know, and it's pretty sad. But, you know, there's, there's four different places I can sit down at the dam, and, you know, basically there's only one real safe one. <laughs> You know, it's, it's one of my favorite places to sit. But it, it's really... Um, there's two places, I think. I think only two places where I really see kids in the river. So once they get rid of the dam, there's just... You know, I'm <laughs> not sure what they're going to do. I think the kids will miss it more than anything else. But, I don't know. I, I'll kind of miss it because I like looking at it when I sit there. It just is... It's a landmark, <laughs> basically. <clears throat> and one more thing, I guess, to talk about is I gotta check that plug on the controller. I think it might be melted again. And I, I can drive with my lights on. Uh, today's kind of overcast. And yesterday? <clears throat> I think it was yesterday. I also had my lights on. But I can't drive with my four ways on, it'll go into error mode, so... You know, that's kind of an indication there's an issue with that plug, so I... When that's gonna happen... I don't know. I guess that's it. I can't really think of anything else. I'm pretty sure that was it. I think I covered everything now. So I'm just going to take a break of it. Likely. Won't be too long. Uh, we go again. I just... Instantly, what I was going to say just went poof, went away. So, I'm going to end this here. Um, well, my talking part anyways. So, I'm sweating like crazy now. Oh, my, my arms are like rubber. I need a... I need a shoulder strap for that thing. <laughs> There's nowhere to hook it on. It doesn't really come with one, so maybe I'll have to make something. I don't know. Anyway, that's all I got for this one. So, I don't know, maybe I'll start a video and just kind of work o work on it over a few days. It's, it's really hard for me to do that, though. Because normally once I start working on it, I just go nuts and, you know, keep at it until it's done. But if I do that right now, it'll be like 5 o'clock in the morning, you know. It's just crazy. So I'm trying to get up earlier. I got woke up at 8 o'clock this morning, 8.30, something like that. I've been up since. I did sort of kind of sleep for like an hour just before I came out, but that was accidental. <laughs> That's the problem if I don't get out of bed. I end up going back to sleep when I don't want to. Yeah. Anyways, I gotta stop talking now. <laughs>